Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today I'm doing an overview slash review of Photoshop Touch from Adobe for iOS devices. As you can see, it's located on my home screen here on the bottom right. I'm going to go ahead and launch it by clicking on it now. When I do so, we're going to be presented with Photoshop Touch's home screen. And from there, we can import photos, we can share them, we can sync them with our Creative, uh, creative Cloud account and more. So let me uh, start explaining some of this. In the middle button on the bottom, if you click on it, here is where we can import photos from our photo library or import them from our Creative Cloud account. We can take pictures by clicking on camera or create a blank document. I'll go ahead and click out of it because I already have two images imported that we can start using. The bottom left button, if I click on it, this allows you to turn on and off your sync to Adobe Creative Cloud once you have created an account. I haven't currently set one up, so I'm gonna click away from this now. On the bottom right, this is your sharing options. If we wanna upload something to our Creative ac Cloud account, this is becoming a tongue twister evidently, right? Or I just can't talk. <laughs> or if we wanna save it to our camera roll, etc., then this is where we can do it, from this menu. So I'm gonna click away. On the top right, this settings icon, this allows us to change a couple settings. And one of the important ones, if I were you, I'd go into image import, click on that and change your maximum import resolution to the max, which is 12 megapixel. By default, I think it was on, I don't know. I don't recall, I think maybe four megapixel or something like that. But by increasing your maximum import resolution um, to a higher account, you're gonna allow yourself to bring in higher res photos into Photoshop Touch. Granted, depending on what device you're using this app on and how fast that device is will determine the performance, right? So next, the next icon allows us to change things within this home screen. So example, if we want to make a duplication of a picture, if we want to move a picture into a folder, if we want to create a folder, we can all do that from this menu. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on create folder now, and I'm going to create a folder called grunge. And I'm going to use that folder to import this little grunge uh, picture that I may overlay on top of the bandit picture by using a separate layer and a blending mode. So if I wanna change the name, for example, of an imported picture, right now this grunge layer is set to untitled. If I click on untitled, I can call it whatever I want. I'm gonna leave it at untitled for now, click on done, and I'm gonna move that into my grunge folder. I'll click on this drop down menu up at the top, select move, select what I want to move, which is the grunge layer, select OK. After doing so, I wanna tell it where to go. I'll click on the grunge folder, then click on OK, and bam, it's moved it. Now, if I wanna work on the Bandit picture, which is a picture of my dog Bandit, for those of you who don't know, I'll click on it. It will launch the editing interface, right? So from here, we have tons of different options. I'm gonna start on the bottom left. On the bottom left right now, we have a selection tool selected. If I click on hold, I can drag my finger up and I'll see that I have four different selection tools. By default, it should be the lasso tool. Um, next to the lasso tool to the right, you have two different options. You have a mode and anti-alias. Consider anti-alias like feathering. Um, and as far as the mode is concerned, you have three different modes. The first mode, this with the marching ants, is new selection mode. If you click on it, the next mode is add to selection. So if you want to add to your current selection, you would have that set. The next mode is the minus button, and that would be subtract from your selection. I'll go back to new selection, and I'll draw a selection around my dog. You'll notice that I missed part of the right of uh, the frame because it was too close and my finger just wouldn't fit there. So I can resize the image within my viewer by pinching with two fingers on the screen. When I do that and I click on the mode button to include the plus sign, I can now draw a new selection to cover that portion that I missed, right? Maybe we notice if I zoom in by taking two of my fingers and reverse pinching, I'm not even sure that's a word, but that's what I'm gonna use, um, and I switch my mode to the minus sign, I can now draw a selection to make this a little bit tighter, for example, to remove some of the pixels from the initial selection. I'm gonna go ahead and use my fingers to pinch a little bit to resize the photo. If I just have two fingers and I drag up, down, left, right, it can reposition it on my screen, right? So that's the selection tool. To prove the selection tool is working, we'll go up to the top, click on the second button, and these are our adjustments. For example, let's say I wanted to make this portion of the picture black and white. If I do that, you'll notice it turned my selection black and white. There were no options for the black and white adjustment, but hey, 
that's okay. We're going to get to some of the others that do have different types of options. So one of the things that I kind of screwed up on so is that I made this change or adjustment to the original layer. This is not how you typically would work in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and undo this. On the top right of your screen, you have an undo button. If I click on that, you'll notice that it undid my adjustment, but it also showed me a secondary button underneath the undo button, which is the redo button. If I wanted to redo, I could click on it, but I'm gonna undo it, and I'm gonna click on the bottom right button on my screen. This is your layers palette icon. When you click on it, you'll notice I have one layer currently. If I click on the plus button, you'll notice that I have options to add a new layer. I can either add a photo layer, which would be from my photo library from the home page. I can create an empty layer. I can duplicate the current layer that I have selected, or I can say I want a new layer from my current selection. If you didn't have a selection already made, that would be grayed out. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate my layer, then click on done. You'll notice that I now have a duplication of the layer that I had previously had selected. The second button next to the plus icon is your opacity and blend mode icon, as well as to make changes, for example, to flatten your image or merge layers that are visible, merge them down, or to do some type of color match between layers. If I wanted to delete this layer, I would click on the trash can icon. If I wanted to change the blend mode, I click on the blend mode, right? So if I click on multiply, you'll see it multiplied my pixels and made the whole image darker. If I change the blend mode to screen, it's going to make it everything lighter. I'm going to switch it back to normal for now, and I'll see the opacity. When I change the opacity, it's not going to do anything because the two, uh, two layers are identical, right? We'll get back to this later. I'm going to go ahead and click on the flatten icon right here, just to show you the options. Flatten, merge visible, and merge down, just like Photoshop. I'm gonna say done for now, click away from the layers uh, menu palette, and it will bring me back over here. Now when I make a change, for example, if I go back into the adjustments, select black and white, and I come over here to my layers palette, I can now do things because these two layers are different. So for example, if I go into the blending modes, and I set this to overlay, you'll notice it's give it, given my image kind of like an outline style effect. I can dial it down a little bit by bringing down the opacity of this top layer to taste. I'm gonna switch it back to the top, change the blend mode back to normal, and I'll go ahead and click back on this particular one, go into the options, say delete for that particular layer, and then reduplicate this layer. When I reduplicate this layer, I'm gonna click away just making sure I still have it, I do. I'm gonna click away and I'm gonna draw a different type of selection. So I'm gonna click and hold on the bottom left of my screen, come up to the selection tools and select marquee selection. When I do that, I'll make sure my mode is set to new selection right here. And then I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag a marquee. When I do so, I'll see my marching ants there. I'm gonna click on effects up at the top. You'll notice there's four different sub tabs for effects. And these allow you to apply filters basically to your image. So let's say I wanted to add some type of, uh, let's say graphic pen, since that's gonna be dramatic. When I click on that, it's gonna apply it to my current selection. Next, I'll notice that I have different types of uh, uh, options for this particular effect. On the bottom, I can change the angle, but I also have on-screen controls that currently say it's set to 45. So if I drag this around, it will change dynamically on my picture showing that right now, okay, at this 215 degree angle, that's the, that's the angle in which those uh, graphite pen strokes are being made, for example. I can also click on size and I can change the size of the strokes if I wanna increase its level of detail. Once I'm happy with my changes, I can commit them by clicking on that checkbox on the bottom right, or if I'm unhappy and I don't wanna make any changes, I can click on the X. I'm gonna commit my changes by clicking on the checkbox. Now that I have that going, Let's talk about some more of the options. On the bottom left over here, if I click and hold, we'll notice that I have a magic wand tool so I can select similar colors. There's a tolerance slider here, I'll click away. For those of you who are familiar with Photoshop, you'll understand what these tools are and be easily up and running in no time. Next, over here on our brush, this is to paint in, um, this is just to have a paintbrush. To the right of it is an effects brush, which allows you to paint in the same filter effects that are up at the top based on a paintbrush selection. Next, we have a spray tool as well as an eraser. On top, we have a clone stamp tool. We have a healing brush tool. We have blur and smudge. So I'll first start with the clone stamp. 
what you want to do first is select the source. If I, if I click on source and I select bandit right there, then I can click on the brush. I say I'm happy with the brush and I can start drawing. Whoops. Why is that not working? There we go. Now switch back over to the brush and draw. And as you can see, I'm now cloning part of my image. You can see this is pretty fast. It's pretty responsive. Um, so that's basically the clone brush tool. If I wanted to use the healing brush to get rid of acne on a photo, I can do that. If I wanted to use some blur, so maybe I wanted to blur out what I just created, I can go ahead and draw in there and it's going to go ahead and set a blur based on the options I have here on the bottom. So if I increase this something pretty crazy, you're going to see that blur pretty intense, right? I'll click back here, I'll come back up, you'll see that there's a smudge tool just like Photoshop. I can click and I can smudge my image. I'll click back over here real quick to go over the paint effects, which is pretty cool. But first, let's do the brush. I have my color here on the bottom. I can change my color values. I can select how my color picker is displayed. HSB is hue, saturation, and brightness. I can have this style color picker. This is a color swatch picker or an RGB. I usually have it set on HSB um, select. So let's use this purple color. I'll go ahead and draw. You'll notice I can draw there. I can change my brush size by clicking on brush. Let's say I want it to be huge, boom, huge, etc. Let's say, hey, I didn't want to do that. On the top right, I can click on undo. So now that's the brush. If I click on the brush tool again, come up here to effects brush and let go, it's going to allow me to select what effect I'm going to paint on the bottom in the middle. If I click on that, I can say, you know what I'd like to do? I'd go ahead and like to paint in a comic book effect, let's say. Let's say I'm gonna, paint, uh, this is where I'm gonna set what the setting is gonna look like. So let's say I select six and click on the check here. Now, when I start painting, I'm painting that comic book effect based on what that setting was I had on the previous screen. I'll click on undo so you can see the difference of what I just did. So that's the paint effects, which is pretty cool. I'll switch back over to my selection tool and talk about the menu up at the top a little bit more. So I'll before I do that, let me make a duplication of the previous layer by clicking on the plus sign here, saying duplicate layer, selecting this layer that we had all these changes to, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this layer icon, select delete. I'll close it by clicking on away from it, and I'll come up here to the ampersand uh, symbol. In this symbol, we can do things like crop this layer. We can change its size, rotate it, add some text. We can do some transform options. So let's select transform. When I do that, you'll notice I can transform this layer and create a secondary layer. And right now it's snapping, right? I'll go ahead and click on the check mark or there are options here. So if I wanted to flip this, I can flip it just by clicking on these buttons here. Let's say I like this. Let's say I make this put this back to this original size, right? So now this is the original size, but it's flipped. I'll click on the checkbox here. I'll come back to the ampersand and I'll say crop. When I crop this and click on the checkbox, it's cropping the whole image. I actually thought it was going to crop just that layer. I'll go ahead and click on undo and come back to the ampersand. We'll notice that I have a few other options. Um, I can rotate this. I can add a gradient, a lens flare etc etc so there's tons of options in this program this is much more advanced than any of your other image editing uh, apps as far as I'm concerned but if we did want to get rid of something we could use this uh, selection tool draw a selection here come in with that selection and let's see I think we can probably delete how would we do we'd probably say cut there we go. And now we've deleted that selection that we had from this layer. If we come back over, we'll see that it, there's some overlap there. So obviously we'd go ahead and we'd have to play with that. If we're happy with our changes, we can click on done up at here and we can either say save or save a copy. Let's save a copy because obviously we want to retain the original. Now back over here from the home screen, if we select bandit one, which is the copy, we can rename it by clicking on the name here. If we're happy with it, we don't have to. We can just click on this bottom icon here and say, save to camera roll, for example. It's gonna ask me, what do I wanna save it as? A JPEG or a PNG? Let's say JPEG is fine. I'll go ahead and select the image that I wanna save to my camera roll. And if I click on okay, 
it's going to go ahead and process it and now save it to my camera roll. If I want to share this, etc., I can select down on this bottom right, click on share, select in what format I want to use. Let's say I'm going to use JPEG. I'm going to select the image, click on OK. It's going to format the file and allow me to select different options that I can save this to or share it to. I'll select cancel for now. This is a quick overview on Adobe's Photoshop Touch for iOS devices, guys. I hope you like the tutorial slash overview. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I plan to do a second tutorial on tips and tricks on how to get the most out of this app in the near future. Again, if you like my content, guys, please like and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm out.